So can you be successful using external reed bugles? We're going to answer that question, plus break down the different types of external reed bugles that are available on the market today, coming up. Hey everybody, Michael Batiste from the Elk Calling Academy, where we give you the blueprint for success in the elk woods. So I know in the Beginner's Guide to Elk Calling, we've primarily been focusing on diaphragm reeds, and I've had some people ask, can you do these same things on an external reed bugle? Yes, there are some limitations and some things that you can't do. Now, obviously a diaphragm reed is a better option to go, but I certainly understand that some people have a gag reflex and others are even allergic to latex, so they can't use a diaphragm reed. So as far as external reed bugles go, there's a lot of different types. There are limb driven, there are tongue driven, there are bite and blow, and there's even some out there that you just blow and push a button. So what's the difference between them all? Really, between all of them, you can do the sounds and they will work. They are successful. I know guys that use external reed bugles and, and they're very successful elk hunters. Um, it really comes down to personal preference. You know, what type do you want? Now, obviously, if you have an allergic or you're allergic to latex, you don't really want to go with ones that you run with your lips or run with your tongue. You would want to go with a bite style that basically is then driven by a silicone uh, false tongue per se. Really it's, it's top teeth, bottom teeth, and you, you use your teeth to put pressure on the reed. Now as far as the lip driven ones there's a few options you know this is the mouthpiece from very game calls that comes on their uh, thunder bugle pro magnum um, this is a mouthpiece off of a power bugle as you can see a little bit different but both are designed that you can run these with either your bottom lip or your top lip so whichever of these that you go with try the two different ways to see which lip you have more control with and everybody's a little bit different with that now, the tongue-driven ones have a larger learning curve because you have to learn how to place your reed on that shelf and really channel the air over the reed. So, bigger learning curve. But, with this, you get some really good deep tones and some good sounds. So, just remember that. It'll take a little bit longer to learn, but you can actually get some really good tones. Now, you know, I said earlier, can you do all the sounds? Um, you know, we hear about a lip ball or a display bugle where we're puttering our lips. Obviously, if you're using a lip-driven type external reed bugle, you're not going to be able to putter your lips, so you have to add your voice. But there are tubes on the market that have external reeds that you can still putter your lips and you can still get that that guttural sound by puttering your lips. Um, with a lip driven one you just basically add your add your voice. Ugh. So just let's break it down. So on the diaphragm where we talked about bugling, talked about making just a little bit of contact with that reed and ugh, adding your voice. Same thing with this. I'm gonna just put hardly any pressure. Now, before we get into that, I don't put my lip right up against the reed. I actually hold my lip down a little bit and then I roll my lip up into it. For me, I found that's how I have more control. So, okay, to start a bugle on an external reed, like I said, very light pressure, uh, growl with your voice. <laughs> So you certainly can get that growl. Now to break into the bugle, you just stop growling with your voice and start adding a little bit more pressure with your lip. And 
and then come back off and add your voice back down to the end of it. Now, if you want to do that type of bugle, that, that display or that guttural sound, what you're going to do is when you're in your upper notes, you just add your voice back into it. And then chuckling, you're going to take the same principle where you apply pressure and oh, apply pressure. Oh. So you can really do a lot of the same sounds. Location bugles, challenge bugles, it's all a matter of how much lip pressure and air pressure. Now, I talked about bottom lip or top lip. Roll it over. So it works both ways. Now, the power bugle comes usually in a tube. And what I've done here is I've actually put it into a dominator from Flextone just because I wanted a little bit more expansion on that sound. Now the neat thing is, is if you, if you like the mouthpiece from the berry, it slides in there as well. So now you can have a little bit more expansion, but really the tube that this comes in from the berry game calls is a good tube. It does have good expansion on it. This just gives you another uh, option. So again, bottom lip or top lip, Top lip. So as you notice, this mouthpiece gives you just a little bit more volume. Now, if I was going to steer someone in the direction of what's the easiest external to use on, I normally steer people towards the power bugle. Now the power bugle does give you a couple of options that you can use either the gray band or the white band, which will give you different tones. The berry mouthpiece actually comes with a white reed, wet red reed, green reed, and black reed, so you have even more options to mix up the tones and the voices a little bit. This mouthpiece with the false tongue is from Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. It comes on their selectable and packable. They have a couple of different bugles that come with this mouthpiece. Like I said, this one is nice because it's, it's, it's a bite down style. Um, but then again, you can always flip that down and turn this into a lip driven or a tongue driven. So this mouthpiece here gives you all three options. You can use your teeth, your lip, or your tongue, where these two power bugle, you're pretty much limited to your lips, the very game call lip and tongue so you have some options there as well now just like this tube from deep timber sounds that is primarily strictly just a tongue driven if you do go with the rocky mountain hunting calls or the berry game calls and decide that you want to operate those as tongue driven the learning curve is a little bit bigger and it's going to take you a little bit longer to learn that so I'm going to go back to my recommendation for beginners is the power bugle to get started. Then once you gain some confidence and you get some ideas, you can start playing with the other types and start learning that tongue driven option. All right, guys, as always, we appreciate you guys tuning in to the beginner's guide to elk calling. Um, next week, we actually are not going to film a beginner's guide to elk calling because we will be in the Western Hunting Conservation Expo show in Salt Lake, but we will be doing some live videos throughout the day. Now, if you have missed any of the episodes, we'll put some links up at the end that you can actually click on to go to all of the chapters within the beginner's guide to elk calling. We'll also put up a link where you can click and go to the uh, Wapiti Wednesday Q&A where we break down some of the sounds a little more. Now, if you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and you can click right down here on the logo at the end of this video and subscribe. That way you'll be notified when we upload new videos and you won't miss out on anything. All right, guys, keep calling, keep practicing, 
but most of all, have fun, and we'll see you guys on the next chapter of the Beginner's Guide to Elk Calling.